Periva Sharanam, Glimpses from Sri Mahaperiva's Life History, Volume 2, Chapter 9, The Beginning of 21 Year Long Travels, 1919-1939. In the month of March 1919, Mahaperiva began his 21 year long Vijaya Yatra, victorious travels across India. With a retinue of over 200 people, he started his journey from the city of Kumbakonam on an Amavase, no moon day, following Shivaratri. The purpose of his travel was to visit various holy spots in the country, perform rituals, take dips in holy rivers, talk on various ancient scriptures and provide counsel to devotees. Besides hundreds of people, his entourage included 30 bullock carts, numerous animals such as elephants, horses, camels and cows. Before starting on this long trip, Mahaperiyava worshipped Lord Vinayaka at the Mutt, prayed to three of his predecessor Acharyas who had attained Samadhi in the Mutt premises and performed Chandra Maulishwara Puja, Vyasa Purnima. Hindus consider Sage Vyasa as the greatest guru, teacher in the world. They believe that Sage Vyasa had compiled the Vedas in four distinct parts and therefore called him as Veda Vyasa, also identified as Badarayana. Veda Vyasa is considered as the author of Brahma Sutras, ancient scriptures explaining the Jiva Brahma unity. The full moon day in the month of Ashada, Ani or Adi in Tamil is celebrated as Vyasa Purnima. This day is also celebrated as Guru Purnima. It is an Indian tradition to honor all Gurus on this day. The three great saints, namely Adi Shankara, Ramanuja and Madhva have written commentaries on Vyasa's Brahma Sutras. Therefore, sannyasis following the three major Hindu philosophies, Advaita, Vishishta Advaita and Dvaita celebrate Vyasa Purnima by offering prayers to Vyasa in the form of Vyasa Puja. In Kamakoti Pitam, Vyasa Puja is considered a very important event. Mahaperiyava used to perform the Vyasa Puja with his own hands, taking about six hours to complete it. Vyasa Puja at Vepattur In deference to the wishes of the people of Vepattur, a village about five miles east of Kumbakonam, Mahaperiyava performed the 1919 Vyasa Puja in Vepattur. Chaturmasyam Because of the rainy season after Vyasa Puja, there was a likelihood that sannyasis travelling on foot may stamp or kill crawling insects and other tiny creatures. As sannyasis should not cause hurt or kill any living being, a tradition was set for sannyasis to stay at one place for four months or four pakshas, two months, following the Vyasa Puja. The observance of stay at one place for four months or four pakshas is known as Chaturmasyam. In accordance with this age-old tradition, Mahaperiyava observed Chaturmasyam in Vepattur village for two months after the Vyasa Puja. Year 1920 In the year 1920, Mahaperiyava continued his travels to many places in Tanjavur district. He was received by some of the devotees at their homes. Sirakalattur village property owner and Kanniwadi Zamindar, Sri N. R. Iyer of Andrew Yul and Co. Calcutta, played host to Mahaperiyava at his home and celebrated Mahaperiyava's first year travels in a grand manner. While staying in Tiruvarur city, Mahaperiyava worshipped at the Tyagaraja Swami temple every day. 
Mahodaya in Vedaranyam. The Mahodaya is an occasion coinciding with the rising of the sun and the moon in conjunction on a Monday, the sun being in Capricorn in the month of Paushya, January, February and the moon in the asterism of Shravana. Hindus regard Mahodaya as very sacred occasion for taking bath in holy rivers and in sacred spots on the seashore. During the 1920 Mahodaya event, Mahaparyava visited Vedaranyam, a coastal town in the southeastern tip of India. This place was earlier known by the Tamil name of Tirumarai Kadu, the place of ancient Vedas. Mahaparyava stayed in Vedaranyam for a week and had a Mahodaya holy dip in the ocean at nearby Kodikkarai. Following this, he visited Nagapattinam city and stayed at the local Nilayadakshi temple. Visit to Mayavaram city, renamed Mailadudurai. Launched Veda classes. Mahaparyava performed the 1920 Vyasa Puja in the city of Mayavaram. He stayed in the city for three months and launched Veda classes for about 300 school students. On November 2, 1920, the Dharmapuri Adinam chief Sri Pandara Sannidigal met Mahaparyava and offered his respects. Muslim scholars meeting. During Mahaparyava's stay in Mayavaram, a Muslim scholar, well versed in the Holy Quran but blind, expressed his desire to meet Mahaparyava. Mahaparyava agreed to meet him and gave him an appointment. When he arrived at the scheduled time, Mahaparyava was engaged in a meeting of scholars discussing the philosophies of Hinduism. A huge crowd of people was waiting to have a darshan of Mahaparyava. Mahaparyava called the Muslim scholar to his side and requested him to explain the philosophy of Islam to the large audience. The Muslim scholar gave an emotional response thus, What can I say before such a great person as you? In the final analysis, all religions talk about the paths to reach God. There is none bigger than God. In my heart, I see you as that God. Where there is love, one can see God. Saying this, he shed tears of happiness. The large audience witnessed an extraordinary sense of devotion displayed by a blind Muslim scholar to a Hindu saint. Other travels. During the year 1920, Mahaparyava travelled to many other places in Tamil Nadu. It is beyond the scope of this e-book to cover all the places he had visited. Mahaparyava's visit and activities included the following. Sirgari, Darshan of the Deity Sattanada Swami, Anai Tandavapuram, Performance of Navaratri Puja. Other places, Tirukkadayu, Tirupungur, Vaidishwaran Koil. At this place, Mahaparyava was received by Sri Somasundara Thambiran. Tiruvengadu, Darshan of the local deity, Shvetaranyeshwarar. Prayers at the Adishtanam of Paramashivendra Saraswati, the 57th Acharya of Kamakoti Petam. Vaishnava Centers. 12 Vaishnavite holy spots out of the total 108 in India are located in Sirgadi Taluk. Mahaparyava visited and prayed at all the 12 spots. Finally, he travelled to the city of Kaveri Pumpattinam and had a holy dip at the confluence of River Kaveri and the Bay of Bengal Ocean. To be continued, Periyava Sharanam.